Hello friends, today I will show you my flight control stick that I made for playing Microsoft Flight Simulator. The way this works is on a similar concept to my previous project that is the uh, steering wheel that I made for playing driving games. As you can see it also uses the micro same microcontroller which is the Arduino Uno as its basis. Now in this case we have actually a dual axis potentiometer system and a single uh, uh, potentiometer. So let me first show you its workings. So as you can see this is the flight stick. So when we move it to one of the sides the aircraft starts yawing to that respective side. This is because this is the aileron axis. The ailerons are the parts on the wing tips right there and there. So when they when we move they when we move this the microcontroller receives the signal. I'll be going into more detail later and so the ailerons move. Similarly if we pull back the aircraft starts moving towards the for a top and when we push back the aircraft starts going downwards. So this is because this is the elevator axis that is this part behind the tail fins there. So that part uh, this controls the altitude of the aircraft. We also have the throttle here. So as you can see currently it's at full throttle. So the engines are at full throttle but as you can see when I start rotating a bit as you can see the throttles move downwards and the engine also spools backwards and we can again put it to a little bit forward throttle. So this is also analog. So we have control over that how much throttle we want. Now over here these are the flight control buttons. So there is five present here and there is one embedded into this uh, the control stick. Now speaking of these buttons I have configured them in a way that these two are the rudders. So as you can see when I press either of these the uh, rudders start moving. Now obviously that's not something you're supposed to be doing mid flight. This is for on ground like taxiing and stuff. So the aircraft starts shaking uh, we have the parking brakes here so this is again uh, on ground so when you are on ground we can use that and also while landing it can be uh, used for uh, slowing down the aircraft we also have the flaps so as you can see currently we have full flaps it can be seen right there so when i press the uh, top button it retracts the flaps and as you can see the aircraft engine starts pulling back as a result that's the auto throttle uh, thing of the aircraft this is the air a320 neo by the way so uh, we can also push the throttles, uh, sorry not throttle, the flaps up again. So this currently is in the uh, cruise flaps right there. That's a cruise flaps. So as you can see the engines decide to go to full throttle now instead of going to 70% throttle like it was before because previously it was on the uh, takeoff flaps. Now there is another button inside uh, embedded into the uh, this uh, control stick. So if I take down the landing gears for a second, if you see landing gears are actually currently coming out so as you can see the landing gears are uh, coming so now we can press on the flight stick so the, if you heard the click as you can see the landing gears are now retracting so that's the landing gear uh, button now we can uh, uh, obviously just use and play the microsoft flight simulator almost perfectly just by this because this has the controls the rudders the throttle and everything the only time you would need a, a secondary device is for the but extra buttons which i have not decided to put on this so you can put uh, as many buttons as you like so the way it is configured is as many ports there are except for these two you can put uh, so 0 and 1 from 2 to 13 pin numbers you can put as many buttons as you like so i have currently gone with 5 plus 1 so 6 buttons that's why i have 6 functionalities so for the rest i have to use my controller otherwise uh, everything is completely controllable through the uh, flight through the flight stick now I will show you its workings so first of all if we look closely to this as you can see this is actually a dual axis potentiometer so this this is a single a single axis potentiometer as you can see there is only one potentiometer and it turns one way only so as you can see it can turn either like this or like this now the way a potentiometer works and the way it is used in this system is basically there is a 5 volt and a ground input connected to each of these potentiometers. Now, based on the degree of the potentiometer, based on where the uh, this uh, uh, head of it is, based on that, it will uh, put a variable resistance. So, these are variable resistance. These are also known as variable resistors. Basically, it puts a resistance on it which reduces the amount of voltage. So, when that voltage is read by the microcontroller, it can calculate pretty accurately uh, where this um, position is so this is a single axis potentiometer so there is only one so this is used for the throttle because it can only be put up or down now because 
a flight control stick has to have analog like that is we want might want to go back a little like go up like this but also turn to the side a little bit it is actually a dual axis potentiometer system so there's two potentiometers now the way this works is the uh, microcontroller calculates the position of both and based on that it will figure out where exactly this uh, fire control stick is now the stick itself is just a little uh, sanitizer bottle with uh, one of those lego cross things put into it with just some tape and other uh, like stuffing material so uh, on it goes into this other part so this uh, uh, the uh, cross lego thing so it can just slides in and it's connected now this has a spring in it which as which results it into staying upright always so if and if we put it back it will go right back now the way the buttons function is actually quite good now this is a very uh, simple but it's very like it's very accurate so basically the way the buttons work is one side of them as you can see one of them is actually connected to a copper so all of these are connected one side and the it is actually going to the ground pin so when the any of these pins receive ground it will detect that the button has been pressed now even if you literally take a ground pin from one of these and put it in it will also detect that the button has been pressed and it will pass the signal moving forward so we are using buttons like that now the uh, potentiometers are all plugged in into the analog port so you can have a total of four potentiometers i have three so far the throttle and two for this so they are uh, a0 a1 and a uh, a0, A1 and A2 so A0 and A1 are these two and A2 is this one you can have also on A3 that's just the way the code is set up and the way the microcontroller receives the signals because the last two don't work very well that's just the limitation of the Arduino Uno microcontroller we are using now let me show you more into detail about the code so as you can see on my second monitor here I have the code pulled up so if I put it onto the main monitor and zoom in actually I'll just switch over on to uh, my fly uh, my uh, computer uh, screen recorder just give me a second okay so I have pulled up my uh, screen recorder here so as you can see this is the code running on the microcontroller now in the description you will find a file this uh, uno joy folder so inside here you will find two files so first is the Z JRE flip installer so this is basically the software that uh, makes the microcontroller look like uh, uh, the uh, joystick to the computer instead of the microcontroller I'll be going into more into the detail about that later now in this folder you'll find several items uh, several of which are some of my other projects which I have made previously and some future projects as well so we, for this one we are going to go into UnoJoy Arduino sample folder inside of this we'll find UnoJoy Arduino sample.ino this is the folder which we are going to be this is sorry not the folder this is the code running on this as you can see this is the same copy i'll just close the previous one now this here this is the main code which is running on the microcontroller and this is the library which is behind the code so this is what may, does all the calculations and this is where we mention to the microcontroller where each pin is so as you can see here we have written everything from a from pin number 2 to pin number 13, 12 so 13 is not present i believe and a4 and a5 that's why we cannot have two more uh, two of those on the last two analog pins now down here this is where we have the uh, an, uh, like the analog inputs basically this is where we have the potentiometers connected so i have three as i said you can just add another one so that would be right stick y so that you can add here add uh, a3 just copy the code and just change this to right stick y and analog read a3 so you can plug in another potentiometer so you can have a total of four now uh, inside of the library if you notice this is basically telling like this is the entire calculation system so this is how it calculates everything from the uh, position of the potentiometers to detecting the ground and thus sending the signal further to flip installers uh, flip program and then into the computer so this is where we are specifying the buttons of the computer uh, sorry of the uh, normal uh, so like this as you can see we have the uh, so this is triangle and the square and that and then we have the d-pad the these buttons these uh, uh, all of these so we are just specifying that that is because if you don't specify this the computer does not know which one is which and it will not work 
so all of this as you can see we have specified all the buttons as one now here we are calling for the data so basically this is where we are requesting the data to be refreshed we are then setting up an integer so that's basically a variable data uh, no that's the fixed data sorry yes this part we are fixing that uh, the uh, the we are set up the setup is being uh, made into an integer this is basically an integer now down here we can get the data so this is the data buffer and then we are then get uh, taking the calculator uh, sorry the uh, the controller data and then we are doing the we are uh, then basically here we are uh, this is the uh, yeah, this is basically the part where we are do, doing the calculation and checking the signal integrity and stuff like that. We are then beginning the serial monitor to be monitored. So if you open up the serial monitor here, you will see the uh, exact all of those working. Now it's currently not available because uh, it's being set into the uh, reflashed. I'll sh show more of that into later. So yeah, this is basically just all the calculations and stuff like that. We are calculating the data and we are uh, like calculating the voltage based on the uh, uh, position of the potentiometers and then we are checking whether the buttons have been pressed or not and that's basically the code part. Now we have once we have done that the signal is ready uh, the microcontroller receives it it knows what to do with it but the computer doesn't know that it's the supposed to be getting that signal it sees it as a microcontroller so for that purpose we have to reflash the BIOS. Now the way we reflash the BIOS is first by putting the microcontroller into something known as a reflash mode. So if we see the microcontroller here, you will see there is four, uh, sorry, yes, there is uh, there is six pins here. So if we short the top two pins, you will see flashing lights and you will hear the USB unplugged sound on the computer. I am not doing it currently because it is already reflashed. And I don't want to mess stuff up by second time reflashing it. That might do something. I have not checked it myself. I do not have another uh, microcontroller on hand, so I'm not risking it currently. Now, once you have done that, you have to go ahead and click on turn the joystick dot back. As I said, I'm not clicking on it right now because I do not want to uh, may f like corrupt the fi uh, the microcontroller. Then I'll have to completely reset, and it's just a long process. But it if you do accidentally do it that's not a big deal just send uh, me a comment i will help you out and you can reflash the entire thing again and it will be fine just fine now if we go ahead and click on edit this is basically the thing that's running behind this so this all here we are just saying it's like we are just saying that uh, checking where uh, the uh, hex file so the uh, like the new uh, operating system work uh, is present then we are this is writing for just for the interface for that we are trying to reflash the arduino and then here we are we are doing first we are erasing the flash memory present on this then we are loading this buffer so this is the new the this is the buffer for the new operating system will be which will be loaded onto the uh, microcontroller now this is either success or it will have to reflash it so it will try now here once it's done sorry this is uh, yes once it's done it will the uh, like once the uh, it is erased it will then uh, try and put in the other uh, operating system so that is the load buffer part here load this buffer into the microcontroller and it just next this is just saying whether if uh, there is an error it says the firmware was not loaded and uh, this is what to do next or if it is a success then this is the part which will be written then that's basically it so yes just click or double click on this and if you want to put it back into the microcontroller part sorry the arduino part you will just click on turn into an arduino dot bat so previously we clicked on turn into a joystick dot bat this time we will double click on turn into an arduino dot bat now once you have done that and you have installed flip you and then once you have uh, done that again like the reflashing part you should unplug and replug the microcontroller from your computer that will basically just reload the entire microcontroller and then it should show up so if you open up control panel uh, now you will see that in view devices and printer you can see the unojo joystick so if you go into game controller settings here you can see in properties 
this is all of the buttons so uh, as you can see uh, if i go in this video again so as you can see this is all of the buttons present on the screen there so if you see on the axis when we rotate the uh, joystick it, it will turn the respective axis if we go this way as you can see now currently my x and y are flipped that's because of the way the game is set up i had to flip it out because some there are some uh, issues with that you can decide you can just simply switch between the two uh, on the microcontroller just uh, check that out and it should work now this uh, so for my case i have set it to z axis so as you can see there is no value here but as we start rotating the potentiometer as you can see the value slowly starts coming back and when we put it to full the value goes to the max and it's now getting full throttle and if we put it right back it's getting no throttle now we have the buttons so as you can see all the buttons are present down here so whenever we press either one so as you can see this is button number five this is the point of view hatch so this is the d-pad d-pad but uh, right we have the six we have nine we have uh d-pad down and we have uh yes that's it now this is the d-pad left so i think i actually switched around the d-pad whatever so yeah that's the the microcontroller and all its functionings now if you want to build this project go ahead and link in that description as i said you will find the uno file which has everything you need to both reflash the comp chip as well as uh, load up the new bios and then you should be good to go this is a very simple but very fun project and you can actually play with this this is highly accurate both the throttle the microcontroller uh, the the this part the flight stick as well as the buttons so i highly recommend you try doing this project if you can as it, even the part requirement is quite little anyways uh, if you like this video please leave us like and subscribe to the channel and share this with as many people as you know thank you